Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're in the shop again. We're going to try and get this rear axle finished up today. Uh, <clears throat> we had some heavy snow yesterday and I've been under the weather a little bit, but uh, we're going to get these rear axles shimmed today. And um, a couple guys wanted to see how this was done, so we're going to go through it step by step. Now we've got our inner axle seal in there and we greased our bearing and we tap the cup and the axle shaft in there. And you can see right now it's got some in-out play on it. <clears throat> and you want anywhere from one to six thousandths of play. And we'll check that with a, with a dial indicator a little bit later. Um, so you've got your shims and then you've got your plate. And so your shims are, are bigger than the plate and they'll let the cup stick out of the housing and that's what we want so right now we're just going to try and get close and uh, remember keep your holes your, all your holes spacing right you know because that center hole allows any uh, grease or oil if your if your seal goes to leak out not into your brakes but out onto the ground where you can see it so that's going to set in there like that so I don't like to put the um, the brake backing plate on yet until we get close it's just a it's just a lot to deal with um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to bolt it up with some uh, <coughs> excuse me with some 3 8 bolts and then um, we'll check the end play and then once we get it kind of close then we'll go ahead and put the backing plates on so I'm just going to take four bolts and stick them through here and torque them down and that'll get us That'll get us nice and snug, and we could check. And we'll do the other side the same way, but that'll get us nice and snug, and we could check the uh, the end play once we get both sides done. <clears throat> okay, once you put your axle shafts in, they're connected basically all the way through. So this axle shaft goes in, and it hits that axle spacer shaft that's in the in the spider gears there okay sometimes they call it the center block sometimes they just call it a spacer but inside that uh, inside the case there this axle is going to hit up against that and the other axle is going to hit up against that too so it's going to be basically one solid shaft all the way through there and you can't have that too tight that's what that's what will overheat your bearing and, and mess everything up so we're going to get these bolts in and I'm going to do the same, everything I'm doing on this side, I'm going to do on the other side. So we're going to put the shims in the plate, torque those down, and we'll see where we're at. Um, let me get a couple wrenches here, we'll tighten those down, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, now we've got four bolts on each side, and I've got shims on this side, on the other side. And that's not always going to be the case, depending on which rear end you have. On the early ones, on your 2As, your 3As, your 3Bs and stuff, they shim both sides. Um, some, <clears throat> some of your later uh, CJ5s, um, and it could be you have an axle from a different vehicle in your Jeep or whatever. Sometimes they only shim them on one side. Um, just kind of duplicate what you had. If it's shimmed on one side, you could leave it like that. If it's shimmed on both, um, you know, shim them both. Um, but right now... Uh, you know, we just tapped these in and we left some end play, so we don't know exactly where the cups are. We don't know if this pushed the cup in or what's happening. Now, this is all one shaft now, basically, because we've got that spacer in the center. So you put your <coughs> you put your uh, your plate on there, and then get yourself a dead blow hammer, and just give it a couple wraps. And what that's going to do, that's going to send that bearing out. It's going to send the cup all the way tight up against that plate. Then you go on the other side and you tap that shaft and it's going to bring this one out. That way you know for sure that your cup is tight against this spacer. It's through the shims and it's tight against this spacer. That's critical. Don't just put, don't just put this on, tighten it and think you're okay. Drive the shafts one way and then drive them the other way. And I'm going to go around and, and wrap the other shaft and that will bring this one out. Okay, just a couple shots with the dead blow is all you need. 
Nothing crazy. Let's see where we're at. Okay, it feels like we have zero play there right now. But we're still spinning. We haven't bound it up or anything. So, that's good. Now we, <clears throat> now we can add... Um, the spec on this is from one thousandths to six thousandths of end play, you know, in and out play like that. Um, I've seen them, I've seen bearings get burnt up. I can't say if it was because of lack of lubrication or they had them too tight, but um, I like to get them around the six thousandth mark. Uh, no more than that, but I shoot for six thousandths. So I'm going to jump in our shim pack there and see what we have. And. Um, and we'll put a shim on each side. Maybe, uh, I, I don't know what I have in the shim pack, but um, we'll adjust the shims around. And we'll, uh, we'll even up the, the packs on each side. And then we'll come back and we'll check the end play. So I'm going to do that now. Um, and, and be right back with you. Okay, guys. I found a couple of 3,000 shims in our package of shims. And I got one on each side. Now I've got a dial indicator set up here. And if I could stay out of the way enough, I'll show you what we got. Now the shaft is, we, we wrapped the shafts, we brought everything out. This shaft now is all the way in. It, it's uh, toward the center. So now we're going to bring it out. Hope you can see that okay. And it looks like we got five and a half thousandths, maybe six thousandths right there. And that's what you need. You gotta have a little bit of play in there, otherwise you burn your bearings up. And that's where I like to set them. Um, and it's worked out good for me for years and years. Now we're real close right now, so we can pull these bolts out. And what I'll do is I'll get the uh, backing plates, I'll get the outer seals, and um, and everything that goes on the backing plate and stuff. And we'll get those assembled onto the rear end here. Um, but as far as shimming goes, just play around with it till you get it right. Um, you know, get some shims and put them in there and, and fine tune it. And, uh, and don't rush it. Make sure you get it right. You got to have some play in there and you'll have a long, long bearing life if you do it that way. So, um, backing plates are coming next. I'll get those out of the boxes and everything, get, uh, get going on those, and we'll be right back with you. Okay, we're ready to put our first backing plate on. You notice I got a clamp here. Uh, I've got the rear axle in the frame on the springs, um, but I don't have the spring plates finished yet. I just painted them. They're still wet. I can't put the U bolts in. So we just got a clamp down. Okay, we're putting an 11 inch kit on this vehicle. Um, we got the overdrive in there, and usually when you go a little faster, it's nice to stop a little faster too. So, I like the 11 inch kits, and what I did was I put a bead, I think you can see that, I put a bead of uh, uh, Permatex. Uh, when I use RTV, silicone, or anything like that, I use uh, Permatex. It's called the right stuff. Um, I think that's the finest um, gasket maker out there right now. And uh, Permatex makes it, and their products are real good. So, it's called the right stuff if anybody wants to know. And um, <clears throat> we're just going to send this over bolts. See how many of them we can get through there. Okay, we got to work some of those bolts in there. Um, <clears throat> let me get those worked in there, and um, we'll put the outer seal on next. Okay, let me see if I can move you around here a little bit. Uh, it's hard to get everything in one shot here. Uh, maybe you can see from there. That might not be too bad. Okay, now remember that bottom hole there. This hole right here, that's your drain hole. That always wants to be open. So everything you put on you want to put your gaskets in order and your seal in order. Everything wants to be with that hole open. 
So, <clears throat> we're going to put a gasket on. Okay, here's your outer grease retainer right here. Um, this is going on next. And what's going to happen is your hub is going to fit in there. Um, and that way no grease will leak through or anything. Oops, look at me. I was doing that wrong already. Okay. Remember, keep that hole open. Okay, there goes another gasket. Okay, now this is your, your guy here that if anything does get through, it's going to it's going to get slung around in there and it's all going to drip down here come down this and right out the back and when that happens you'll be able to see it will be dripping on your garage floor or whatever and um, yeah, so now that hole is open and any anything that's going wrong is going to show up okay lock washer and then a nut Okay, so that's our basic axle shimming and 11 inch brake setup on there. Um, self adjuster here, you know, that, that works that little thing down there. Um, very nice setup, and you stop a whole lot better with these. Uh, it's, a, it's a good upgrade, and um, you know, it's not for the purist, but uh, if you're going to drive your Jeep, it's a real nice upgrade. So um, let me get this bolted on, and I'll come back and uh, I'll show you what's next. Okay, guys, I just finished pressing the studs in all the um, in all the hubs, and uh, basically what I did was I took our jig out again. You've seen that before when I pressed the studs out and took the drums off, and um, it works both ways. So you flip it over that way, and we take it over to the arbor press, and just bang all those studs in. It's a perfect flat surface to do it on and uh, super fast and easy to do it that way so I've got left and right threaded studs so be conscious of that if you got left and right uh, left hand thread goes on the left hand side of the Jeep and we're gonna put that rear hub on now and show you how to do it without uh, making any common mistakes so let's head back over to the uh, chassis and we'll get that hub in okay here we are over at the uh, the vehicle again and putting the hub on seems like you know just an easy matter of putting it on there and torquing it down but I've seen so many of them done improperly and the hubs broken that I'm gonna go over it step by step now when they milled this slot in here at the very end of it it kind of tapers up I think you can see your key see it has a uh, a little relief right here right there that goes down and toward the inside now the biggest thing you gotta remember when you put this hub on is don't put the key in there and then put the hub on take your hub put it on there as far as you can push it and remember that key that taper part has to be down and then take your key and put it in and tap that in with a hammer <clears throat> if you don't do it that way <clears throat> and, you, and you put the key in there um, a lot of times the hub will grab it and it'll ride up and it'll be like a little ramp and that key will start to turn up and what it does is you can see how thin the hub is right here it'll split that hub wide open and that's what you don't want so I'm gonna put a little grease around here to ride in the seal and then I'll show you how we put this in Okay, I've got a little grease on there. Let's go in the seal. I got our left hand studs on this hub. And we're going to just push that in as far as we can just easily go with our hands. Okay, line up your key. Tap your key. Now what's going to happen is you put your washer on there, that key and that hub, everything's going to move on together. Not One of them's not going to push the other one ahead. And that's kind of critical. Um, I've seen, you know, dozens and dozens of split hubs 
and, and their wheels are wobbly and people don't know what's going on and it's just a it seems like such a simple thing but I thought I'd go over it because so many guys get it wrong so make sure you take your time be conscious of what you're doing and, um, and get that in there right okay now you got this big nut on here and it wants to go down a <coughs> minimum of 150 foot pounds and then there's a cotter pin that goes through there and then your dust cap um, it's easier to do this with the with the wheel on the ground you get the torque out of it um, but whatever you have to do if you have to hold back on this you have to put a bar through there whatever you need to do make sure that's a minimum of 150 foot pounds and then stick your cotter pin through if your cotter pin hole doesn't line up keep tightening it until it lines up with the next slot don't ever loosen that uh, take it to your 150 and then no matter what just tighten it till you get to your next slot um, you need to torque on there you don't want any slop on that it's just uh, it, it's critical it's absolutely critical you get that right so I might get that torque down and um, cotter pin in there and then uh, I'll be back with you in just a bit okay I've got the nut torqued down got a cotter pin in there uh, torqued it down to 150 and naturally like every time you do something like this it doesn't line up with the hole um, it took over 200 foot pounds to get it to the next hole we know that's on there good and tight and um, uh, when you do your cotter pin work make sure you use the right size pin and uh, that's kind of a little pet peeve of mine uh, you know you see a lot of guys will just throw a tiny little pin through there I had an old friend uh, was an aviation mechanic and um, you know they did a lot of safety wiring and stuff like that and you know his his motto in the in the aircraft world was uh, if you can move a cotter pin after you put it in you did it wrong so um, make it neat make it right um, you know we're not worried about falling out of the sky like uh, like those guys were working on planes and stuff but uh, you know take pride in what you're doing put the right size pin get it in there right and um, now we're ready for the cap on there and um, I'll come back and I'll show you how uh, how everything finishes off Okay, one real nice part about the 11 inch brakes that you guys are going to like is uh, you don't have to pull the hub and drum to do a brake job. Pull your drum off and you you got access to everything. Your drum is just going to fit right over your hub. We'll get that on there. Uh, it works out perfect. Fits right in your backing plate just right. Um, and uh, you adjust your uh, self adjuster down there and it's gonna last a long time basically this is just a later CJ5 CJ7 type brake setup and um, and what Jeep did back when was borrow this exact setup from a Ford this is a Ford design um, and Ford used that for a long time and uh, Jeep just borrowed it from them um, parts are easily available out there uh, anything from a 70s late uh, mid 70s uh, early before they went to disc brakes on the CJ7 so um, they they did disc brakes mid 77 so uh, 75 CJ5 76 CJ7 um, that's what you're looking for parts for in a parts store um, you get them in any parts store in, in America uh, very common um, everything is available so that's how you shim the axles, get the hub on correctly, and um, put your brakes on. So, uh, <coughs> I've got to do everything on the other side that I did to this side. Uh, and I'll get that done. And uh, I think we'll end the video here on this. And um, hopefully we're going to have a ring and pinion for that front end pretty soon. We need, it, we need a new ring and pinion for that, and I'm waiting on that. I've got all the other parts. Um, I want to show you guys how to finish up the front end. Um, so that's what's probably going to be coming next uh, but the rear end is basically finished up and uh, just got to put the cap on there and uh, and that's it so um, uh, hit the like button or subscribe or uh, send me a comment and uh, if you like the series um, keep following along there's a lot more to come and um, we'll catch you next time thanks for watching and uh, hope you're learning something along the way